Hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. As always, all the information about the video, my website, links to products I show, everything is in the description below, including a timeline if you want to jump around. So happy you stopped by to check this video out. So what really is the purpose of this video, other than to maybe slightly annoy some people who might just drive nuts, the fact they're putting a low cost strap on a high cost watch, and I'll clarify what I mean by high and low cost in a second. I'm not really a strap collector or hoarder in that sense, you know, an overboard. I have one strap per watch for a lot of them, might be two or three in some situations. It varies, but I've got a, a moderate strap a selection to choose from for the watches. But it doesn't always have to break the bank to change up, even if it's a high-end watch like a Tudor or a Rolex, so on. So that's all I want to do is show some low cost straps on high cost watches. What I mean in this video by low cost straps would be something probably in the $20 range, give or take, could go down toward 10, maybe up toward 30, but generally something in that $20 price range, give or take. And high cost watches, the ones I'm going to show in this video are in the two, five, six K range. So that's what we're going to take a look at and hope, hope you enjoy it, get something out of it. And um, if, it, if it bothers you, it's okay. You can skip ahead or go check out one of my other videos. Now, I will say you get what you pay for, right? Sometimes you can be pleasantly surprised. And I'll talk about a few of those options today. But you can have a really nice, I'll call it high cost watch. This is my Grand Seiko Blizzard SBGE 249. Beautiful watch. I'm not a particular fan of the Grand Seiko bracelet, however. It doesn't have a micro-adjust, and I just live in a place where it's almost essential. And this is the most expensive strap I've ever gotten. This is a Mugato strap, leather strap from Paris. Beautiful. It's custom-fitted for the lugs. And that's... You don't have to spend $400 on a strap to make a watch look as good. The obvious pro for buying straps that are OEM or the high-end custom stuff is that you will get perfectly fitted straps in terms of the width, you know, wrapping to the lugs. There's no overhang uh, up or down uh, between the lugs and the strap. And so you're gonna get that perfect or near perfect fit. You have to look around a little bit more if you're gonna try to find that in the low cost market. And I will add, if you have that special watch or two, you wear it a lot, um, or you're looking to change it up from a dressy look to a sporty look, that kind of stuff, you have a high-end, high-cost watch, it is often worth to have a really nice strap or two. It's uh, the watch is worth it, and you wanna sort of uh, put its best foot forward, as it were, best hand forward. Okay, to start the points of irritation, I have my Rolex 39 OP, and these things were made for the bracelet. I have this on a low-cost silicone strap. I will talk about this one more specifically in a second, but I wanna start with my Tudor Black Base Ceramic. So yeah, my Tudor Black Base Ceramic, 41 millimeter, got it not that long ago. This is the main watch I'm gonna to use today to talk about this low-cost strap on a high-cost watch. This watch is around 5K. It comes with a leather rubber hybrid with a deployant clasp, which is really comfortable. Love wearing it on that. And that's really the strap that is made for it, clearly. It also comes with a NATO strap, black and gray, but I'm not a big fan of NATO. What I wanted was a 100% rubber or silicone strap for this watch as opposed to the hybrid. And just to give another color option or contrast. Now at a distance or on initial glance, this gray might look a little bit odd, but I like bringing out subtle elements and colors used in dials and sort of highlighting that with the strap, which will contrast the main and major colors a little bit more. If you've seen my review on this or are familiar with the watch, you'll know that the writing, so Black Bay Master Chronometer, we've got the logo at 12. We got the minute and hour track around the edge of the dial is in this subtle, very muted gray color. And Barton had one of their elite straps that matches that color basically perfectly. To the eye in person, it looks like the exact same color. Of course, Barton straps, uh, many of them are a combo. You got the front color and then the back color here is black. So you get this black gray combo, which looks great from the side as well. And you just can't go wrong with a Barton. It's really good quality for the money. These are $22. So you got a $22 strap 
on a $5,000 watch. And you know, the Tudor straps are great, but again, if you want to buy one, you know, from the AD, that's gonna cost you an arm and a leg if you're buying straps independently. This provides a great option. I got two of these, and I think this is another good combo, particularly as it looks from the side, is the black with the red on underneath. And these have the black brushed buckles, which matches well with the brushed ceramic case and bezel. Other nice thing about Barton straps, if you've had these before or know, you get two sizes. If you have a smaller wrist, you can use the smaller length or a little bit larger wrist, use the larger length. So you get three pieces of strap with that $22. Hard deal to beat. And the packaging for Barton comes in this kind of static free looking bag and yep, good stuff. Now going with the dark gray or the black, that's always gonna be an easier task than to say, I wanna try to find a strap that matches this loom collar, kind of a beige cream color. And as you look at pictures online, it can be hard to tell for sure, okay, is that gonna match? Is the color that I'm seeing in the photo actually match what I see with the strap in person? It, that can be a little bit more of a guessing game as you maybe already know. So I first started with this strap, this is, Alpine silicone. It's $18.95. Came in this little box. Simple, low cost. Again, links are in the description below. I thought maybe that'll be close to matching the loom. And it does kind of generally look okay. It came with a silver buckle like this. Okay, so that was on the end. I had this large brushed buckle from, I don't know, a couple years ago just sitting in a box. Usually I have some optional buckles and clasps sitting around. I thought, you know what, that'll match that strap perfectly. I'll talk in a moment about buying buckles, at least some that I got for this experiment. I thought, okay, online it looked like it was gonna be a little bit of a lighter tone, but it's more of like a sand color, like a wet sand color. Uh, it's more on the beige side of things. It's got a little bit more gray to it than a tan color to it. So it's close, but, and it looks okay. Like I said, I like the perforated surface, but it, it's a little bit off to me. It was only 19 bucks, so it's, it's worth a chance, right? And then if you end up not wanting it, you can always sell it on. But then I did come across a really low cost watch strap. This is from Wristology. This is more of a cream colored, it's almost a buttermilk color, which is kind of what that loom looks like on the black base ceramic. This was $12.99. It also came with a buckle that matched the strap, but I want that contrast. So I wanted the black brushed buckles to match the, the case. And so what I would recommend, one brand uh, is Archer watch straps. I have some of their straps. I've, I've had them in some review videos, I think before, but they sell buckles independently too, and you can get polished or brushed or whatever. So what I did was took one of their buckles and I put it on this strap. The hard thing about this exchange was that the original buckle really wasn't meant to be taken off of it. So you see on this archer strap, you can get to the spring bars from the side. That's pretty normal. Or, you know, if you give a little squeeze, you can see the relief on the spring bar so you can get the spring bar tool in there and pull it back. The spring bars in here are not like that at all. So you can see there's not really a notch there to grab onto. And on the sides, you can see there's no hole. I kind of really had to work at getting this off. I actually took a pair of pliers and put it between the ends of the inside of the buckle and then pried it open enough that I could get the spring bar out. Um, and if I wanted to put it back on, I could just you know take pliers and kind of push it back together once it's on. But I don't see it going back on that buckle because the black looks way better anyways. There are a lot of different companies out there. You can look on Amazon or other watch dis parts distributors. You can find options. But these buckles are eight bucks. So the eight plus the, the 13, you know, I'm about 20 bucks, 21 bucks for this strap combination. Like the Barton Elite series, I like the textured surface, the quick release spring bars, you can tell are lower end. So that's where you wanna sort of be careful is 
play around with them a little bit when you first get a low cost strap do a little bit of inspection make sure they're sturdy the last thing you want is this thing you know coming undone off of this cheap strap spring bar situation and falling off but these are pretty solid but they do stick out a little bit more than maybe a, a better quality one might but when you put it on the watch you can see that actually looks pretty good the color match is very close and so from a distance that looks a lot more appropriate i guess of a combination than this alpine strap did that's just kind of look a little bit more weird from a distance because those are clearly different colors a little bit too close for their comfort or for a good contrast one other thing i'll say about this 13 dollars strap is it's a smooth silicone that's going to be right up against the skin and silicone straps will get a little bit uh, sweaty underneath the barton and other sort of a little bit better straps you can see there's a raised edge to these just to give a little bit more potential airflow between the wrist and the back of the strap just to keep it a little bit more dried out than maybe if it doesn't have that this alpine strap i really like the back i like i like this strap i just wish the collar was a little bit closer but i'll find something else that looks good on too but i like the perforated top like i mentioned in the back is actually just as nice if not maybe nicer you see it's also quick release all of these are and then it's got this ribbed surface on the back and they call this higher quality, and it, it is higher quality than, than this cream one, but just better match in the collar. So that is uh, the Tudor Black Bay Ceramic, low cost straps I came up with. So now to the Rolex. This is on, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right, Yizawera, Y-I-S-I-W-E-R-A, low cost <laughs> Chinese origin manufacturing, uh, this is a $19.99, so $20 strap. What you always take a shot with, a guess at, with buying a rubber fitted strap from one of these places, and I got it you know, via Amazon, again, links below, is how close is it going to fit to the case on the lug interior? and how close is it to matching the curvature of the lugs. So there's a little bit of an offset there. However, it's really close and it looks a little bit more pronounced on the camera than it does to the eye. When this is on the wrist, it looks like almost exactly on. I can't complain about this fit at all. And there are different colors you could go with, but the one that I felt I wanted to try or made the most sense and the options that they had for this was this gray color and actually i think it looks pretty good the op is made for the bracelet that it comes with that's what it's always going to look best on and there are companies that make this same color fitted strap for a lot more money like you're going to pay into hundreds of dollars for the exact same thing really it's just a rubber strap maybe those companies have done a little bit more work to make sure that the the roll off the lugs is exactly a perfect fit but you know what for 20 bucks versus 200 bucks this is a no-brainer for me again the main thing you got to watch for is does it fit in a way in which it's going to be secure and i took the spring bars the original spring bars and used those so not playing around with the ones that came with this particular strap and you can see also it's got that advantage it's got the edges here so as this rubber sits against the wrist hopefully get a little bit more airflow underneath keep things dry see i still i've had this watch for a long time and i still haven't taken the sticker off the back and i wear it quite a bit but i don't know just haven't felt the need why if it's not bothering me right so that's my low cost option for my op I think it looks good. Probably drives some of you up the wall. And this strap came in really cheap packaging. What, what can you expect? However, one pro for this one is, and a lot of these strap companies, um, particularly of, say, the Chinese origin, they come with spring bar tool kits usually. So come with some spare spring bars and a little tool. The tools aren't great. They, they do break easily. Um, get you a nice strap tool if you're going to be changing out straps a lot. And as I mentioned, the lug fit on those, I had bought a green one to perhaps go with the, the Tudor fitted and not even close. It, it looks bad. I thought a green rubber strap would look good maybe with this, this black and cream color. 
just not fitted, so that one's going into the pile that will maybe eventually fit something else or I'll sell on to someone at some point. The next strap type I want to talk about is this 1399 Ben Loon Crazy Horse leather strap. I've shown these before. These are my Christopher Ward C1 Power Glow prototype and Morgan Arrow 8. Again, these watches are in the two. Actually, I don't know how much this was originally, but um, I think it was somewhere around 3,000, give or take, in a prototype sale. This one was around 2,500 retail. I got it in a sale. Both of these have the SH21 movement. I've talked about these watches before and done reviews on them. But anyway, expensive watches, but really the straps that come with them are okay. Um, but I wanted something, again, that really highlighted those elements and textures of the dial. And believe it or not, these $13, $14 straps, for me, do the trick. Crazy horse leather, so it's got sort of a, a suede feel to it. This red on the Morgan matches perfectly with the red elements on the dial, like this small seconds hand. You got the power reserve indicator over here. Just an excellent combination see it's also quick release you've got the white stitching matches the dial in, in an excellent way you simply don't have to break the bank to to make this look good the red would look good on on the power glow as well and sometimes i swap them out but i like the black on this a little bit more got of course a lot of black and dark color on the dial got those same red highlights but this black suede slash crazy horse leather with the stitching looks really good simple buckles kind of have that dressy look to them just really happy with these straps and i've worn these a lot and you can see they're, they're going to get a little bit worn out so i usually buy a couple if you get these low cost straps that way you have a spare if it just starts to get a really worn out look but i've worn this a lot and it's holding up all right you'll start to see the wear and tear on it but you know, it's and it'll get a little bit dirty, and I've noticed that on the keepers more than anywhere, sort of wearing out a little bit. But well worth, well worth the fourteen bucks. One other example I'll throw out there is I have my Chris Reward limited edition Trident that has this beautiful blue bezel on it, and one of the straps I'll wear on this sometimes I don't have it right now is a Cardi silicone strap. See, there's a silicone theme today. If you got these dive watches or watches that just you want to have a softer feel on the wrist sometimes or just give a different more sporty look then i like having the rubber options but cardi silicone straps i've pictured that on these tridents before there's a blue that matches this with white stitching it's really a beautiful look and you got to be careful about that with silicone straps low cost ones is over time depending on how much sun water or just the elements they're exposed to, they can start to feel a little bit sticky, right? a little bit a little gunky a little bit. There's different ways you can clean them up some, but they last well enough for the price, and then you can always chuck it out and get a new one. But those silicone straps from Cardi are another low-cost option. They only cost $12. The last thing I want to show here just for fun is I have an older Pagani Design Chrono that looks like a vintage Paul Newman-style Rolex, and I had heard that they had released some new models and that they had actually even gotten a little bit better than they were. They're already pretty good for a hundred dollar watch. They also came out with some designs that were a little bit more unique looking as you can see here and they have upped the finishing quality believe it or not for a hundred dollar watch. This one's 120 depending on what source you get it from give or take and then shipping costs you're usually around a hundred bucks. I wanted to compare older model to a newer model and I only have a couple Pagani watches. I'm not particularly a huge fan, but you know, I like playing around with low cost stuff too. But the brushing and polishing is actually, is improved. I'm gonna do a review on this watch. It's got an applied logo now instead of just printed on. It's actually really good and didn't have any quality issues. Bracelets on these things are just awful though, terrible. And if you've ever had a Pagani design watch, you know what I'm talking about. So you gotta find something else. Well, sometimes you can put a high cost strap on a low cost watch. So the opposite of what we're really talking about today and it can really elevate what is a low cost watch and just make it look all around better so this is a cw vintage oak a camel leather strap and it looks 
awesome, I think. Just this combination. Really fun to wear. You gotta have the right clothing for it to go with. But it's got a mix of a dressy, casual, and sport look all in one. And I've really enjoyed having this option. Nice quick and go because it's quartz, technically mecha quartz. So the chrono has a sweeping function on it. But this is really um, another route you can go. And I'm not going to do a video on that. But these straps run around $80. Some particular leather straps on CW can get up over 100 But that's about the cost of the watch itself. And it's a massive improvement over the straps or bracelets that come with those things and can just make the watch really pop and look spectacular. At least I think so. So let that one drive you nuts for a little bit. All right, let's check out. Well, if you didn't think I was sufficiently crazy enough, now you know for sure and that sometimes that $10, $15, $20 strap might be all you need and give a good look to even those high-end watches. Gives you some good low-cost variety of looks. It's just why not for the price? If you buy a few for the price of one of a higher-end strap, yeah, just do it. Have some fun. Why not? Word of caution I will repeat is that if you do get a low-cost strap, give some initial attention to the spring bar quality. Make sure that they're not damage good solid diameter and that they fit the strap pretty well that's the one thing you could run into sometimes the last thing you want is that high cost watch falling off because of a bad or defective spring bar all right that's it thanks for hanging out here at watch complications i'm out